Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is a group of inherited connective tissue disorders with 13 different forms or subtypes, the most common being hypermobile EDS, while the most dangerous is vascular EDS that is associated with vessel and organ rupture. These syndromes are the result of a genetic abnormality in genes coding for connective tissue, or for molecules that interact with connective tissue. Examples include collagen, fibrillin, and matrix proteins, and each subtype varies with which genes are involved and to what degree. Collagen and other connective tissue serve to provide support and strength in the skin, ligaments and bones as examples. Therefore, these genetic changes lead to three general biomechanical problems. Ligament laxity, fragility of connective tissues and impaired healing. A combination of these three can then lead to pain, reduced movement and a reduction in cardiovascular fitness. As we said, there are 13 subtypes. Hypermobile is the most common, followed by classical EDS and vascular EDS. Hypermobile is inherited in an autosomal dominant pattern, as are the classical, vascular, atherochalasia and periodontal subtypes. The others are autosomal recessive. Additionally, 70% of the variation in the phenotype is thought to be due to heritability. The presentation of Ehlers-Danlos syndromes are extremely variable, both in severity and in the character of the symptoms. In general, for a diagnosis to be made, most subtypes will need either the presence of generalised joint hypermobility or skin hyperelasticity, meaning excessively stretchy skin, or atrophic scarring. Other features include joint pain that typically does not feature swelling, warmth or erythema and there may be muscle spasms and recurrent dislocations. There can be some subtle signs like problems with proprioception and there's often a history of delayed walking in infancy beyond 18 months. Around 90% of adult patients will also have flat feet. There may be easy bruising and a silky or velvety texture to the skin. The presence of a mid-systolic click may indicate mitral valve prolapse, and often there are autonomic disturbances like orthostatic hypotension, vasovagal syncope, or postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, where there is an increase of 30 beats per minute within 10 minutes of standing. Gastrointestinal disturbance is also common, such as heartburn, chronic nausea or vomiting, bloating and pain that may be relieved with defecation, with a link to irritable bowel syndrome. There are commonly hernias, prolapses and the presence of diverticular disease, and in vascular EDS there is a higher risk of perforation. Females also tend to suffer dysmenorrhea and dyspareunia, meaning pain during menstruation and sex respectively and also may have abnormal uterine bleeding. A collection of physical characteristics, known as the marfanoid habitus, may be present, but it is typically incomplete. These include tall stature, arachnodactyly, meaning spider fingers to reflect long, slender fingers and toes, scoliosis, pectus excavatum, a high-arched palate, and an arm span greater than 1.03 times the height. Each subtype has its own set of criteria, described as minimal clinical requirements. Screening for joint hypermobility can be done by asking a five-point questionnaire, which are, can you now, or could you ever, place your hands flat on the floor without bending your knees? Can you now, or could you ever, bend your thumb to touch your forearm? As a child, did you amuse your friends by contorting your body into strange shapes, or could you do the splits? As a child or teenager, did your shoulder or kneecap dislocate on more than one occasion? And do you consider yourself double-jointed? Two positive answers to these questions are suggestive of hypermobility. If this is the case, 
it can be further evaluated by using the physical exam and the Baton 9 point score, where a series of movements give this score. These movements include hyperextending the fifth metacarpal, hyperextending the elbow, hyperextending the knee, and opposing the thumb to the volar forearm. Each of these gives one point on each side, and there is an additional point for being able to touch the palms to the floor with fully extended knees, giving a total of 9 points. A score of 5 or above is generally accepted as indicating hypermobility. For confirmation, there is the option of genetic testing to identify the gene variants present, with hypermobility EDS being the exception as it is a clinical-only diagnosis. Lab investigations can include full blood count and clotting for people presenting with easy bruising to rule out other causes, and imaging like echo is done to assess for complications like mitral valve prolapse and the aortic root diameter assessing for dilatation. There is no cure for Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, with management being based on improving quality of life and preventing harm. Maintaining fitness is encouraged and physiotherapy is beneficial in most cases. However, activities like contact sports are discouraged due to the higher potential for injury. For analgesia, there is no specific regimen, therefore following principles like the stepwise World Health Organization analgesic ladder is reasonable, and in severe cases, steroid injections and ultimately cognitive behavioural therapy may also be beneficial.